to the crop critic today is day two or three i can't remember of planting soybeans but uh we're still in alabama should get finished up here in about another hour or so man we woke up to cold weather this morning it was like it was 37 didn't have any frost thank goodness but everything's looking good we're gonna we're gonna finish this farm up with pioneer then we're gonna swing by the shop and uh change the planter over to a different variety to an asgro bean and uh go back up in tennessee and plant beans in tennessee today but uh Corn's looking really good. We've got good emergence. I just wish it'd warm up. It is super cold in the morning. But I want to address a topic. Everybody's wondering what's wrong with my planter. Why it doesn't plant in a perfect straight row. Well, there's a few things going on there to cause that. If you see that, it's actually a good thing. Uh, it's not that the plant is dropping the seed crazy and all that. What that means is you have absolutely destroyed that seed trench. Because if you see your corn in a perfect straight line, that means that you have opened up a true V and never shut that true V. You have created a perfect pathway for that corn to come up and it comes up in a straight perfect line. When you see that corn come up and it's just all set just a, I mean just a little bit. Not no not whole lot, but it'll be all set just a little. That means you have destroyed that seed trench and that corn is coming up this way and this way and this way. And I, I'm gonna tell you, if precision planning could ever figure out a way to drop that seed with that growing point up every time, you're talking about a game changer. And you gotta think of how many times that seed is dropped to the left, dropped to the right, dropped up, dropped down. It's gonna emerge whichever way that growing point is turned. It may come to the left one time, it may go to the right one time. But when you see that corn in a perfect straight line, just straight as the air, that means that you have not destroyed that seed trench. If that seed trench is still visible. It kills me to see people take their fingers and, and try to find seed and you and run it up and down that seed trench. You can see that seed trench is perfect. That, that kills me. You're not destroying that seed trench. And that is a big no-no in high yield corn. But uh, yeah, that's my rant for today. But I mean, you, I'm sitting here looking at them corn rows. Them corn rows are straight. But I mean, yeah, the, the corn's offset just a little bit. That means I destroyed that seed trench. But I'm gonna get more into depth on that and some other topics. Whenever I get a little time to, uh, show y'all some corn and we're going to talk about emergence we're going to talk about a lot of things We made it back up into Tennessee. We're up here at what I call the duck pit. Uh, I've got a duck pit back here in the back that I hunt out of. But uh, we swap varieties. 
We went from a Pioneer 47 A64 to a Hasgro 48 XF2. Uh, it's supposed to be Asgro's race horse. We shall see. But I had an interesting phone call on the way up here. Uh, decap reached out to me. And they're wanting to come shoot a harvest video this fall. But they're in, they're pretty interested in uh, a lot of the practices that we do. When it's high management corn, high management beans. And uh, they're going to come up here and check and see what, uh, what all we do. Hang on a minute guys, there's a bad ditch right here. and you can get dead right back on your line real easy. If you don't have a lot of room to turn around. Money shot right there. Dead on. But that's going to be pretty interesting to do with decal i'm glad they reached out to me i have to get a, give a shout out to my, my buddy corey atley he's the one that recommended them to me uh as you know corey was on car warriors and with me corey's a high yield guy too does a phenomenal job out there in ohio uh y'all should look him up But he does he does very well corn and soybeans does a good job both of them but we're planting you know we're planting anywhere from 110 to 120 thousand on beans uh, no seed company's gonna tell you to plant that but that's what we plant at I like to thin them down to get a bushier, bigger stalk, and you get more limbs, more limbs equals more pods. up I bumped bumped a good stick trailer with the track over here knocked the oil plug off the cap on the idler wheel so uh, it, it kind of bent the oil field part of it so we took a piece of steel plate and just welded over the oil plug and made sure we had oil in it but welded over the oil plug I'll show you guys a shot of that here in a little while just got to do whatever you got to do to keep running. I mean, accidents happened. That was on me. I got too close to the trailer. Everybody knows how it is. You get in a hurry and make the little mistakes.
welcome back we've had a pretty good day so far we planted one two three farms we've moved uh from two counties two states but we're we're back home now in in in, in elor planting a farm the farm that me and aaron own and we're still planting asgrows uh, 48XF2 and this field right here will be our contest field if if they're good enough I don't know we'll just have to see sometimes I have a bean entry sometimes I don't I mean uh, just depends on what they look like but uh, I'm gonna try really hard I sat down at the commodity classic with Temple Rhodes good friend of mine the old bean master, I call him. He's a uh, he can grow some phenomenal bean yields. But uh, I'm taking notes out of his playbook. He's helping me. I've been on the phone with him a couple times a day. Uh, but yeah, shout out to him, man. He let me get turned around here. I mean, he grew 140 something bushel beans last year. That's crazy. In Maryland, too. But, uh. Which we're going we're gonna to try it anyhow. Uh, the first year Tennessee had the soybean contest, I ended up winning it. had anything worthy of putting in it if I say worthy I mean it's 80 bushel but I just hadn't I just hadn't fooled with it in a couple years but might try it again if the beans are good enough but we're playing 120,000 here 30 each rows putting her in for her on tube two bow pony We're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot anyhow. I don't know if we can compete with some of these other boys, but we're gonna try. I, I really hate juggling two crops, you know, in contests like that, because it can draw your attention away from the other. But uh, we'll give it a shot, see what we can go of it. But yeah, just sitting here going back and forth. Y'all stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Well, I'm out here waiting on Tommy. He went to get me a load of water uh, to add to my fertilizer a little bit. Well, I'm going to show you our latest boo-boo of the day. See that? That cap. Got a little green club. Yeah. I got too close to the trailer. Knocked the drain plug off. And uh, we just put a piece of metal over and welded it up and kept going. It'll work. I'm going to order a new one and get it on it. But, uh, yeah. Nobody's perfect. Not even me. But uh, accident, accidents happen. Seems like it happens around here all the time. But uh, We're out here. This is our contest entry for soybeans. We're going to plant it in Asgro. Uh, planting it about 120,000 somewhere along in there got temple roads in my back pocket helping me on it but yeah this is a farm me and Aaron bought a few years back used to be nursery land and we brought it back into row crop land but uh big farm right here got a big reservoir right there that we irrigate out of sometimes if my old traveling gun works good but Man, this is gorgeous weather. Just cool at night, but gorgeous during the day. But anyhow, just thought I'd show y'all how we get around some problems around here. I mean, all else failed, weld it up. You can fix anything with a caulking gun and a sawzall.
Well, folks, we're back. Uh, he just come out of the middle field. He's starting the front field now, and this will end us out for Soybeans 2023. Uh, it's a little bit before 10 now, but we're trying to hustle up and get it done. Um, what the man says, Mother Nature is looking about three to five days worth of rain coming at us. Um, no one of them has popped up for Thursday being a first alert weather day. And usually when we catch those, we get them our own nasty neighbors rolling through here. But we've been monitoring the radars and checking things out. And this big old line, is shows going way on back into Oklahoma. And talking it's moving our way. So, you know, usually when... Oklahoma gets some good gets the storms. It's usually some bad stuff. So and usually we get it right here. So but we hope it's just if it does anything. We hope it's just some rain and some thunderstorms, some good lightning to put the nutrients in the ground for us. But we don't need anything that's going to destroy properties or anything like that or take a life or anything. So we just want everybody to stay safe, stay weather aware. Keep your eyes open for him. And watch that weather, man. Well, here he comes around the corners. So, let's see what we can get from him here.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That is the solid beans in the ground 2023 for Reed Farm. Now I can't wait much to get to go to the house. Been a long day on us. That's it folks for all the beans are in the ground for the first time maybe it won't get cold enough to hurt them it's supposed to warm up over here in the next few days but uh it's uh 10 o'clock i mean i have to thank tommy he laid in here with me he, he never never complains or nothing he's always here with me but we're gonna run this thing to the house and back it up in the shop because it's supposed to rain tonight, tomorrow, next three or four days. We're going to ease this thing to the house, get it put in dry. I appreciate each one of y'all watching. Uh, please, if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, let's keep this channel going. And we'll see you in the next one.